monkey to pick coconut, but Jirin insisted that they did so not on industrial scale as allegedly by Peter. Some, he said, still train monkeys in coconut picking, but only on a small scale as a tourist attraction. And in order to rebut the claim by Peter, Jirin said his plans to invite foreign diplomats to observe how the coconut harvesting is carried out to prove to them that no monkeys are mistreated in the process. Commercial attaches at Thai embassies have also been instructed to give a correct picture on the issue to people in those countries. Right, right. Uh, and uh, in the statement from Peter received by Thai PBS World on Tuesday, his senior vice president Jason Baker confirmed that the confirmed their findings of cruel treatment of monkeys in the harvesting of coconuts in Thailand. He said Peter's investigator was told repeatedly that the monkeys are taken from their families in nature, kept chained up, abusively trained and forced to climb trees. He also called on Thai government to lead the industry to operate humanly with an animal free method, which he said the rest of the world has already adopted. Or it can be responsible for the industry's downfall because of what he described as the writing on the wall. The issue has become a topic of heated debate on Thai social media with many accusing Western countries of lacking understanding of Thai ways of life and of hypocrisy. In his Facebook... Hang on. And in his Facebook yeah. post yesterday, Kun Atchawit Suwan Pakdi uh, Secretary General of the Kala Party asked about the difference between the use of monkeys to pick coconuts in Thailand and the use of pigs in the search for truffles in Europe. He said that the use of monkeys and pigs are two different cultures and both are respectable and adding that in Thailand monkeys and men work together to pick coconuts with the animals being properly trained at special schools. <laughs> So that's the way thing is, in, especially in the south of Thailand, right. with the uh, coconut collection that's right. by monkey working in tandem with human beings that's as well. Right. You know, normally a visit to Thailand by, even by a senior U.S. Uh, official doesn't really, really make headlines, right? <laughs> it, if it makes news at all in the mainstream Thai media. But the two-day visit to Thailand uh, by U.S. Army Chief of Staff, General James McCorville starting tomorrow is certainly an exception. First, because it will be the first delegation by senior U.S. officials to visit Thailand after the coronavirus pandemic has caused a lockdown of the country. For the budget government, this certainly represents the American recognition of the importance of Thailand as its military ally. But for the Thai mainstream media and netizens, it's not the Thai-American relationship that interests them. They are more interested in the question as to why the American general and his delegation will not be subject to a 14-day quarantine, which is compulsory for all people arriving from overseas. And since General McCorville will meet both General Apirat Kong Sompong, the Army Chief, and Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha, the question also is if the U.S. delegation is safe enough for the country's two top leaders to meet, given the fact that the U.S. now has the world's largest number of COVID-19 infections. So much so that self-style activist Sisu Wan Chandya is calling on the National Anti-Corruption Commission to investigate the Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration, CCSA, for what he sees as a preferential treatment of the U.S. delegation. The mini abroad has also prompted officials of the Anti-COVID-19 Center, the Royal Thai Army, and the National Security Council to scramble to justify why the 14-day quarantine will not be required of the U.S. delegation. CCSA spokesman Dr. Thawi Sin Wisanu Yotin said the U.S. delegation will visit Thailand under a special arrangement and must observe health safety measures imposed by the center short of a quarantine. He said under the conditions set by 
set by Thai authority, the delegation must be small, up to 10 members. The stay must be short, and delegation members must have certificates showing negative tests for COVID-19 before boarding their flight and on arrival in Thailand. And if the members of the U.S. delegation expect to be able to look around to Bangkok and other cities, they must be disappointed because under the conditions set by Thai authorities, they will not be allowed to visit public places or even take any public transportation. And according to National Security Council Secretary General Som Sak Rung Sita, the U.S. general who will arrive from Singapore will be here as guest of the Thai army under a special arrangement which will spare him the 14 days they quarantine. Self-styled activist Si Suwan Janya said by not requiring the U.S. delegation to be quarantined, the anti-COVID center, which is chaired by Prime Minister Prayut, could be faulted for negligence of duty. He said he will submit a formal petition with the Anti-Corruption Commission to investigate the case. <laughs> so this is, in fact, one of the biggest uh, topics of heated debate on the social media in the past few days. Yes. And of course, the forcing authorities uh, to come out and to explain why the general from the U.S. Army will not be subject to the state quarantine as uh, all other people are because yeah. there is a rule that uh, anyone arriving from overseas will be subject to 14-day quarantine. So the explanation from the authorities concerned is quite clear, but yeah. he'll be here and his delegation will be here under a special arrangement. <laughs> and they will be here for only three days. So uh, Dr. Tewisin tried to explain that being here three days and being subject to 14 days of uh, quarantine uh, just may, do not really make, make sense. <laughs> yeah, but of course for Thai people, in general, must have raised question whether it's double standard by this practice. And talking about COVID-19 in Thailand, today the new case of infection in Thailand, the number is two, but the two are imported case from other countries, like from India. The Report today by Dr. Pan Prapayong Dragoon, assistant spokesperson of CCSA, said that one case is 31-year-old Thai man returning from India, and the other is a 39-year-old Thai preacher back from Indonesia. Both men traveled on flights on which infection were previously reported. Meanwhile, Disease Control Department Deputy Director General Dr. Thanarak Palikpat said that although airborne infected droplets smaller than 5 microns could be transmitted to the other people within 4 to 5 meters, there is a slim chance that people will contract the disease this way. Dr. Tanarak explained that the presumption that these droplets from cough and sneezes are posing a health threat stem from several countries being unable or unwilling to force their people to wear face masks. For Thailand, the doctor said that there is no need for Thailand to adapt or adjust existing measures to deal with the problem of airborne coronavirus. What is most important, he said, is that the people must respect social distancing and comply with all the directives in order to keep our guard up. So that's the response from medical doctor Kuntep Shai that we cannot underestimate the situation of COVID-19. Despite the fact that there has been an absence of uh, locally transmitted cases for six weeks now? Yes, yeah. yes. And in the past weekend, and it's the very important Buddhist ceremony in Thailand, and we can see how a large group number of people decided to orientate or attending Buddhist ceremony online instead of going to temple in person. And right now we have Kunnat Bunak joining us for this story. So what came out during the weekend? It's not really unexpected here because during the religious holidays, whether it's Asan Habusha Day or even Buddhist Lent Day, we can see that the Buddhist 
came out to make merit as well as dedicate flowers to the monks. So one of the photographers at Thai PBS World had a chance to observe and share beautiful photos of the event here on Buddhist Lent Day, which was this past weekend. So one of the photos that were taken were from Rama 9 Golden Jubilee Temple. So as you can see on the screen right now, many of the Buddhists came out to participate the celebrations here. And the, it, both days are one of the most important religious holidays observed by Buddhists in Thailand and in other countries that where Buddhism is the main religion here. So we can see that the Buddhists came out with their masks on, which is part of the new normal celebration here to make merit and to dedicate flowers to the monks, as well as the most important highlight of the ceremony is the Wien Tian ceremony or the, I'm not sure the exact English term for it. It's like Candle, the candlelight yeah, procession. Yeah. So the candlelight procession takes, uh, took place as well during the weekend. So we can see that despite the pandemic, it will never stop people from coming to make merit and celebrate the most important part of Buddhism. Yeah, yeah it's great that uh, people still have time to, uh, to, take out to take out some time for some kind of a self-reflection on those two very important uh, uh, it is days. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful and new normal at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yes, new normal at yeah. the same time. So everyone here is wearing face masks, whether mm -hmm. they're at the temple or making merit. It's part of the new normal lifestyle right now. And speaking of that, making merit is definitely part of everyone's lives here in Thailand. So when yeah. it came to the religious holidays, whether it's Asan Habusha or Buddhist Lent Day, everyone just came out here and just to participate. Yeah. And the scenes were repeated all over the countries. In all provinces, we saw similar scenes of people going out to make Moritz. Yeah. yeah. And for COVID-19, it seems that some countries probably feel quite safe before, but right now they have to introduce stricter measure for example, yes. like Australia, in Melbourne, probably they are facing another lockdown. Yes, they are facing another lockdown because the government has reimposed a lockdown starting from midnight Australian time today after they have seen more cases of COVID-19. As of today, there are 147 new cases nationwide in Australia and 134 of them are from the state of Victoria, which is where Melbourne is the capital. So therefore, cafes, bars, restaurants and gyms in Melbourne will be closed for at least six weeks, except for essential businesses. Residents are also urged to stay at home. School holidays will also be extended for one more week. So social distancing measures will be taken across the state as well. Australia, in fact, is one of the countries that Thailand intends to go into a special travel arrangement with. But now the authorities are having second thought about it. Yeah. Definitely a second thought because many of the countries that Thailand chooses to, to arrange a travel bubble all experience second waves here. In, and Australia is no exception because we're seeing a big surge here, especially in the state of Victoria. So that is why they decided to reimpose the lockdown starting midnight. So what's the response from the local government? How do they cope with the situation? So over the past weekend, the state premier, Daniel Andrews, reinstated strict social distancing distancing orders in more than 30 suburbs across Melbourne, as well as putting nine public housing towers into a complete lockdown. They also deployed hundreds of police officers and army troops to enforce the closure of the border between Victoria and New South Wales from midnight from Tuesday. And this is the first time in a century that such borders will be closed off because the New South Wales and Victoria border has, the last time that it was closed off, it was back 
during the Spanish flu back in 1919. Mm -hmm. And so this will be the very first time in the century where this border will be closed off. Other states also took further action, whether it's Tasmania, which has set up a hard border against Victoria. So that means anyone from the state of Victoria will not be allowed to enter Tasmania for without a valid reason. The Australian Capital Territory, or the ACT, has also delayed their plans to ease lockdown restrictions as they have found three new cases linked to the outbreak in Victoria. Yes, yeah. Certainly so, another reminder of how careful we'll have to continue to be. Yeah. yeah. So the lockdown has been introduced. So what will happen to Australians who are living abroad and who want to return home? So the government has decided that they might have to slow down the process of repatriating the Australians who are abroad. And this will be, well, first of all, the Australian government has already discussed with the state premiers across the country. So the Prime Minister Scott Morrison said today that he would take this proposal to the National Cabinet this Friday. So this is actually part of the latest responses to the pandemic here. So, so based on the situation, they will definitely slow down the return of Australian citizens and permanent residents by reducing the number of repatriation flights. So, and so far, those who could return to Australia at the moment are those, the, the, the only arrivals were the Australian citizens and the permanent residents who were allowed to enter Australia. But because of the outbreak, so they are planning to reduce the number of flights, bringing those Australians back home. Yeah, it's quite alarming and lesson learned for Thailand as definitely, well. Definitely, definitely. And yeah. that will put a f more, even more damper on the travel bubbles planned being worked out by Thailand with countries like Australia. Yeah. I guess the Thai government will definitely be rethinking about how the travel bubble should be adjusted because most of the countries that they're planning all experience a second wave here. Okay, right. thank you very much, Kunat. Thank you. <laughs> and Kuntep Chai talking about standalone cinema. What do you think of? Of Probably. course, in, in Bangkok, yeah. there, there are many places that, that are, still, are still left standing to remind us of what of the good old days were, were yeah. about, right? <laughs> yeah, and one of them is Scala, or we can say that Scala is one of the last theater which is standalone, but finally, final curtain has to be raised on yesterday, on Sunday. It means the end of Scala as we know it for 51 years. Now let's take a look at this report by Kun Kittipat Chun Sukjit. After 50 years, the final curtain came down last Sunday on the grand theme of Thailand's movie theatres, The Scala. Before the advent of the multiplex, The Scala, located next to Siam Square shopping centre, where Bangkok's residents could get a taste of Hollywood glamour in an impressive theatre, replete with ceiling chandeliers, curved wide staircase and glitzy decor. With the soundtrack of sentimental music, fans come to pay their respects and snap souvenir photos of its extravagant interior, remembering when it's heyday. Nanta Tansacha, the Scala owner, who is now 75 years old, still swells with pride at her family's creation. I love this place. And I it start, you know, I, I saw this place in the blueprint before it was built. And that, that's my father time. So it's, it's really something I'm so much involved with. It. So I can speak. I don't you think it's a beautiful place? The most beautiful one I ever think that we can ever build. And I think no one will build cinemas like this in the future. 
while many staff who have been working here for more than 20 years feel so sad that their second home is going to be closed down for good and seeing it shut is heartbreaking for them เพราะว่าเปิดมาคิดว่าจะได้ทํางานอีกก็บอกว่าปิดก็เสียใจค่ะตกตกใจมากแต่เราก็ทํามานานแล้วเราก็รักสกาล่าค่ะเอ่อเ
Um, of that number, around 30,000 uh, have traveled back by air. Uh, the number of Thais abroad, of course, the whole number abroad is, is uh, 1.6 million. But uh, for each uh, country, for each month, uh, we're monitoring month by month. So in July, we expect to see around, around 14,000 uh, more Thais who would be repatriating back. Uh, and uh, correspondingly, the quota for Thais returning have uh, increased already to around 500 to uh, 600. To 600. Um, however, of course, for those Thais who remain uh, abroad, the embassy have been working very hard to take care of them, uh, to take care of their needs while they are still uh, abroad or, or waiting for, for their flights. Um, that includes uh, Thais who are also perhaps uh, sick or need medical attention. Uh, the agencies are taking care of that. There's also been, of course, a case in, in, in the news about that already. Um, and also, of course, the, the priority, uh, the, the queue, of course, I wouldn't want to say queue, but there is a, a priority that we have to look into. Uh, first is the uh, most urgent cases, uh, including those who are sick, as I mentioned, those who have uh, the visas are running out uh, abroad. And then there's uh, the group who are not as urgent, but also urgent. Um, but in any case, there are many, in the past three or four months, there have been many um, examples of uh, the success of Thai embassy being able to help Thai nationals return, like the uh, student, exchange students, uh, the AFS exchange students uh, from Latin America, or the uh, 3,000, uh, over 3,000 Thai Buddhist monks from India. There remain challenges uh, to date because the, countries, uh, the, the, the situation in some countries are still not uh, very uh, reliable. Uh, some countries are, of course, far in terms of distance from Thailand. Uh, there are people in uh, the list for return, but the problem faced is that some have not shown up in the time uh, for the flight uh, comes. Of course, uh, these, these issues are, of course, being handled by the Thai immigrants abroad as part of the uh, People's Foreign Affairs uh, that, uh, is a, a policy. So, so for those Thai nationals who still remain uh, abroad, of course, we uh, advise us to contact the embassy. Um, the situation was changed every day, but of course, we had to advise to, to contact the embassy because the situation in this country would be quite kind of, kind of uh, fluctuating. Um, so the, uh, the return, the repatriation, would uh, be kind of an incremental, uh, step, step by step. Because there still remains many Thai people who are abroad, but uh, the foreign ministry has been a lot, uh, present a lot on social media, and the embassies have been announcing uh, the procedures for the Thai national, so hoping that uh, we will get all Thai nationals uh, who want to return back to Thailand as soon as, as possible. Do you have any uh, message of encouragement to the Thais who are anxiously waiting to return home? Yes, of course. So for the Thais who are still abroad, um, just remember that uh, we, will not, we will not leave anybody behind. Um, it's uh, the constitutional right of, the, of all Thai nationals, of all nationals actually, to return to their home uh, countries. But in this uh, special or critical situation, this global crisis, um, we, seek, we seek also for your understanding um, that we're trying our best both at the CCSA, at the Operations Center for Foreign Affairs, headed by the Indian Secretary of Foreign Affairs, the ambassadors, the embassies, everyone involved in this network are trying uh, their, their best. So um, please be patient and please do time for the officials to um, handle your case. Uh, we've been contacted uh, per, per case as well uh, from both uh, Thai and, and foreign nationals. So uh, it's all in, in the pipeline and then hoping that everything will be smooth uh, from now on. Even though we have 14,000 Thai uh, nationals left, I think that uh, in the coming months it will be um, addressed. All of them will be uh, addressed and uh, everything will be smooth uh, from their travel, from their flight up until the uh, quarantine uh, when they arrive in, in Thailand. Mr. Deputy, right now many countries are facing second wave of the coronavirus and how that will affect people who like to return to Thailand or even foreigners who want to 
come to Thailand? Well, um, when there's a global crisis, I think uh, all governments, all uh, organizations, everybody is, is affected. So I, I guess we can't uh, answer the crisis by, by, by just one, one sentence or, or, or pretend that everything is perfect, of course, because it's uh, very important for Thailand to be careful um, of the second wave. As you see in the news, many countries in uh, Asia have already uh, almost been facing the second wave, even though they thought they were uh, sure uh, of not having the second wave. But in many countries, the daily uh, uh, infection is like tens of tens of thousands, and uh, world leaders have also been uh, infected. So for the case of Thailand, I, I don't think that we there's such a word as being too cautious. Um, we have uh, had no uh, domestic infection for over 40 days. Uh, all the infections were all imported from repatriation flights. But nevertheless, uh, we hope that uh, we will not be uh, met with the uh, resurgence of, of COVID in, in the country. So we still have to be careful. So, so for foreign nationals, as, as you were asking, of course, the uh, first clusters uh, that were allowed to apply for entry were those with work permits and those with uh, high spouses. Uh, and I know for a fact that a uh, number of these groups have uh, already begun the process or already have uh, returned. Some have also even talked about their experience. Uh, a, a foreign spouse of a Thai national even talked about their experience in, in, in returning. Uh, how, however long the experience was, it was successful. <laughs> he did get to return to Thailand and he went to the media and talk to, talked about his um, experience. But, but that's, that's fine because the, the, the most important thing is uh, he, he's back. So that's, a, that's just one example. So for the other different groups, as, as you know, uh, there was an announcement, a green, green light given to um, 11, uh, total of 11 groups of uh, persons to enter Thailand. Well, that includes also Thai nationals. And it includes also the first two groups that I mentioned. But it also has additional uh, categories like the uh, spouses of work permit holders or the families of uh, high uh, nationals or foreign students and in special cases as well. So there are those 11 uh, groups uh, that were announced and um, there is actually being discussed right now a uh, procedural uh, flow, chart, flow chart for people to um, for it, for it to be a kind of a, a simpler understanding, and that will be coming out uh, soon for, for all uh, cases. No, it looks like it will take some time before the so-called uh, travel bubble arrangement will 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 take off, right? And in in light of the, especially in light of the resurgence of new cases in some of the countries, which uh, were seen as potential partners in this arrangement, I understand that the foreign ministry is in charge of uh, talking to some of these countries. Uh, uh, which are uh, potential partners in the arrangement. So, how do you see these things will move forward? Yes, so in this, uh, well, given this situation, uh, given the uh, COVID situation, which has, which has uh, in fact not uh, ended yet uh, globally, um, the foreign ministry, the government is uh, discussing with uh, various countries for the uh, travel bubble, as, as you mentioned. So. Uh, basically, the perk of it, the perks of it, the good point of it is that the travel bubble will address the uh, those with uh, economic uh, need to enter Thailand, uh, either for business or for other purposes, um, and their visit is, would be a short uh, visit, like perhaps uh, 14 days. Uh, of course, they will still be required uh, certain uh, tests. Okay. So these travel bubbles will possibly um, it, it's called actually a special arrangement with uh, various countries. Mm -hmm. So possibly it will uh, include uh, business persons coming on short-term uh, visits, uh, like three or four days, and then return back to their, their countries. Uh, and it is uh, specifically for countries in which we have uh, uh, held bilateral discussions with, uh, meaning uh, four countries plus one territory, um, Japan, mm -hmm. Republic of Korea, Singapore, uh, China, and, uh, and Hong Kong. Uh, these countries uh, are, in particular, um, able to uh, 
address uh, certain uh, infection uh, ch challenges, okay? Uh, but, but still, of course, the situation changes every day, so we're still in the process of um, analyzing this. And then the groups of persons from these countries would, of course, be um, uh, business persons, uh, technical experts, uh, those that need to come in for, for, for business, and would also have to uh, comply with the uh, health measures uh, that is agreed uh, bilaterally uh, with those countries. Uh, but of course, the timing would uh, still have to be considered according to the uh, daily situation. So that's about the uh, tra travel um, And so it means that no specified date for the beginning of travel bubbles yet at this juncture? Well, there, there have been um, some uh, dates which uh, were uh, released or, or announced, but then they were just a projection. So in the coming months, I would just say safely in, in, in the coming uh, months, as you see, you know, when you start a discussion with one country and then it seems okay, but what if the next week the, the, the numbers rise a lot in, in that country? So, so uh, we're looking at it uh, from a, a very uh, close uh, distance uh, from a daily, daily basis as well. But of course, the, these uh, special arrangements would uh, eventually come into place. Uh, I think perhaps after the 11 groups uh, that, that, that was mentioned, and then perhaps uh, a little bit after or in the same timing as the uh, completion of the Thai nationals uh, repatriation. There, there are many groups we have to cater to, of course, but with this situation, I'm sure that uh, it's understood. Um, if I wouldn't want to compare uh, to any other country in, in, in the world, but um, in terms of management, I think we have the management in, in place. We've been contacted often on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis, uh, people having a worry about their um, Thai relatives or even foreign nationals contacting us uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. But it's on the pipeline if you have your documents uh, ready. Um, so one factor is that even though if you have your documents ready, of course, the timing of the flight has to be uh, in place uh, as well. And for the U.S. Army Chief of Staff, the team will be arriving tomorrow. No quarantine for them. <laughs> you think the yes, air, has, the air yes. has been clear over, over this question? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think uh, you addressed this issue uh, in your program or in the other um, programs um, already. And the uh, Army Chief also came out to the media already. Um, as mentioned, um, in many uh, of the uh, travels to Thailand, there are special uh, cases, special arrangements, either a special arrangement with the four plus one countries or special arrangements for exemptions, for example, like for, for diplomats or for uh, guests of the uh, government and things like that, which are necessary uh, to build um, confidence and to be able to work with other countries, uh, to continue to work with, with, with other countries. But will there be any more uh, official delegation from overseas in the next month or so? As far as you know. Yeah. Um, I have not heard of any specific uh, other uh, special um, government guests uh, in, 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 the, in the near future. Uh, but I'm not sure there is. But, but of course, the regulations would have to be in place. The discussions would have to be uh, set, of course, because of the most important, the utmost importance is, of course, for us to keep our um, standards in terms of preventing COVID. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Kun Natapanu Nopakun, for joining us. We really appreciate your time and comment. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Sadika. Sadika. Okay, so. so. So far, until from April until July, about 50,000 Thais have returned to Thailand That's already. Right. Yeah. But the queue is still quite long. Yeah, certainly a lot of uh, thousands more are on the waiting list too. And of course, I mean, the, the deputy spokesperson wanted uh, to assure that the uh, ties overseas will be taken care of and that yes. the turn will come. Yes. No one will be left behind, that's what he said. Yeah. Yes, but surely travel bubbles right now still have to be on hold. Yeah. yeah. And that's all from Thai PBS World tonight. Thank you very much for watching. And we'll be back at 8 o'clock for Thanh Lok with Thai PBS World. Bye for now. <laughs>